Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to talk today about a little bit about um, how we're God's glory, but um, arise and shine. It's time for his people to rise and shine. So I'm going to start with Isaiah 60, um, and the other one is Romans 8, but let's go with that one first. Isaiah 60. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It's time for us to be a light unto the world, guys. It really is. Um, all this other nonsense that seems to be going on all around us, and just, I mean, anywhere you go, it's just... It, where, is, where is glory, guys? Where is light? The light that shines in this dark world. That city that's set upon a hill. But I had a dream... This one, I've been getting a lot of scripture early in the morning. For whatever reason, Lord been waking me up at like four in the morning. But um, I had this dream the other night. I've been getting scriptures in dreams, and the dream in the in the, in the scripture was Romans eight twenty seven. But it ties in with the glory. Let me get to it. Sorry, guys, I should have already had it marked. Romans 8, I'm going to read 8 and 27, but then there's other parts of it too. For we do not know what we should pray, for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay. Moreover, whom he predestined, this is 30. Moreover, whom he predestinated, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. If you're claiming that Jesus, that you're born again, Jesus is living in you, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, you know, um, Here's glory, guys. Time to shine. Rise and shine above all the stuff that seems to be going on all around the world, you know? Uh, you can turn on the news and it's just a lot of crap, really. Darkness and stuff all going on all around. My wife and I minister at a homeless shelter. Dark, dark world down there. Yeah, a lot of them self-inflicted. Got there by their own choices. I get it. I understand it. But there's also mental illness prevalent in there. Drug addiction. Alcohol. It's just, you know, it's hard to break through some of those people. But it can be the same way in the church, too. I don't want to be the finger pointing guy. Because I got a prodigal son experience after ministering in several different churches. Walking with the Lord strongly years and then became angry at him just look at some of my other videos and mostly over nonsense really blaming God for stuff that really wasn't true God had nothing to do with it it was my poor choices me I get the grace piece but God told me to plow down the center of this because there is kind of a, I hate this term, but left and right in the church, you know? There's judgment, a lot of judgment on one side of it, and there's just everything's God's love, and you can kind of pretty much do whatever you want. So, some of the things he's telling me to say, I'm still working on the delivery, because... I don't want to be that finger pointing guy. And I don't blame the people, but the leaders of a lot of this religious stuff that's going on in this world, claiming to be God, are in trouble. They can't keep spitting out lies to people. So. It's one of my messages, who's your source? But it's time for us to be the glory. 
each and every one of us, whether you're the bottom of the barrel seemingly on the hierarchy chart in your church or organization or whatever, or whether the CEO and president of some big, huge company, widow's might, or David, who was a billionaire. Okay? We put emphasis on stuff. But we're his glory. It's time for, you know, get it right, guys. Dig into the Bible for yourself. Ask God for yourself. Search, you know, not just my messages or what I'm saying, but what other ministers are saying to you or preachers are saying to you too. Is it right, God? Is it the truth, God? Am I getting directed in the right way, you know? I mean, I'm not advocating non-authority either because God has author authoritative figures in our lives. You know, and there's a purpose for that. Wherever you're at in your church. If it's a true church, if it's a true move of God, if it's truly Him. We're all on a journey. So, you, you know, you may only be partially there. You may be a lot of the way there. Sometimes, God, you know, God was dealing with me about another thing. About, um, you know, us being the glory and the light. And we as people put a lot of emphasis on exposure. God showed me this, God showed me this, you know. Prophet is a such a ill-used, misguided term nowadays. A lot of people want to claim to be prophets and apostles. We're all prophetic. And then if you don't agree with them, doom and gloom, and God's going to destroy you, and I'm going to call fire down from heaven because you didn't agree with my opinions. There's just... Most, pro most of the prophets didn't even want the job. Why would you want that position and that job? You know? I just want to be that vessel that God called me to be. And that's where we all need to be, that vessel. Wherever it's at, you may just... Your glory may shine in just the fact that you're raising your children to be godly men and women of His. You know? I don't know. God's going to give you direction and lead and guide and direct you to all truths. That's why He gave you the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So, but He told me about the exposure. But He said, He's the light. So are we. But it's to deliver people. There's a solution to it. Come out. Not just point it out, look at all this bad, wrong stuff. You know, some people gloat over the judgment piece. Glad that people are falling. Ministers or even people in the world. It's like, man, really? Guys, come on. There's a better solution to this issue. A better, and it's Jesus. Follow what he's teaching you and showing you. Yeah, there's a you know, I don't get all the revelation and, and, you know, I'm not even pretend to. There's so many things that, you know, kind of, I mean, we look around, there's judgment all around already. You know, look at the economic collapse of this country. You know, we're broke, guys. Face it, you know. Can't even pay our bills. Problem. Big problem. But everybody ignores it. They stick their head in the sand and they just kind of skate on. You know, Congress talks about every six months or three months or whatever, just borrow more money. They don't talk about paying it back or straightening it out or balancing the budget. I know it can be more complicated than that. Maybe. Maybe not. But Jesus has grace upon this land. For how long? I don't know. So, that's just one example, but there can be others too, you know. But it's time for us to get our focus on being the light, and being the glory, and being the hope. Christ knew the hope of glory. So, shine, rise and shine. What's God telling you to do? Dust off. Whether it's sin in your life, you need to step up. A lot of times God will show you things about others sometimes. Maybe in the ministry. Maybe in your church. Maybe 
Maybe your wife, maybe not. Most of the time it's an opportunity for you to pray for that person. Yeah, you know, you may have to say something. Ezekiel 3, 7. 3, in Ezekiel 3 about a righteous man. If he falls and you don't warn him. You know, that's in there too. That's in the Bible too. I get it. But, read Colossians 3.16. All of three. It's about how we entreat each other. Where is glory, guys? So that person in the church that you're having a problem with is his glory too. Your spouse that you're having a problem with is his glory too. Your children. They can all test us, children especially. It seems to. There is glory. So we're his glory, guys. It's time for us to rise and shine. We should uplift each other, push each other up. Propel. Do the opposite of what the news is. Most of the news is negative. Really, honestly, guys, I'm not just, you know, it just is. They just focus on stuff that's, and harp on stuff. I watch it to kind of get a little bit of the pulse of what's going on about the nation, but man, you know, tune in for 30 seconds and you'll be mad about something. So, I'm not downing those people. I mean, they may think they are doing something. They honestly probably do. Some of them try to be sort of partial. You can see it in some of it. And trying to, you know, get out, get out there. But, you know, it's time for the church, God's people, to rise and shine and stand up for the truth. And to be that light to the world. And to cry foul when there's when you need to cry foul. I, I watched some guy on YouTube. And some of what he said was right. He was coming against a lot of religious, cultic stuff. Nonsense that people put into the church. Or try to put into what they claim to be a church. But the way he was portraying it and downing, and then it was like, okay, great. So what do you do with that? You gotta have, where's the hope? What, what am I gonna do? Okay, you don't, I'm not supposed to do this. What do I do? We gotta have an answer, guys. We gotta be that glory. We gotta shine. We gotta teach people salvation. Bringing them out, bringing them up to a different level in Christ, edifying, glorifying, pushing. Pray for your, pray for your leaders, pray for our country, pray for, you know, every man, woman, and child on the earth. Pray for Vladimir Putin. I, that's probably not even a you know valid point, but it doesn't matter. Russian, Greek, black, white, green, yellow, Chinese, German. It's time for God's people to shine and to be His glory in this world. Now also they're going to know that we don't step up to the plate. Me too. I'm not, this is just, this is just me too. I got a wife. I got children. I got a church I go to. I got sometimes issues in amongst there, amongst people. We got to shine. Be better than portray Jesus. So really, that's my message. Rise and shine for the glory of the Lord. That's one of my messages too. And actually, that's a book that the Lord's inspired me to write. Christ in you, the hope of glory. But, where is glory, guys? Let's do this. Just like the Nike commercial. Just do it. And everything you do. And we all have issues and things that we need to just buck up to and take care of and things that need to be peeled off of us. All of us do, of course. But it's time to get in the spiritual realm. That's why the mind the part of my message I'm going to end with this. Who's your source? Where are you getting your information from? The internet? Some other preacher? Some other books? 
get it from God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. Get it right, guys. Dig for yourself. Find out for yourself. God's not that narrow-minded that He's going to not, you know, tell one person and not another person. Yeah, He may give you a little bit different insight. He's going to probably give pastors a little bit different insight because they've got the responsibility. A lot of their messages are going to be directional and correctional. But he's still talking to all the saints and the people in the church. Just as much. Or the homeless guy in the street. Or the guy that's a millionaire in the penthouse. Or his glory, guys. Like I said, look at, you know, David, billionaire. But the widow's might. She's nothing. Little itty bitty offering. What did Jesus say? She gave more than all y'all. So, we put emphasis on st all this stuff. I get it. You know, you talk about money and people get all, you know, offerings and misused. And just, man, that's all caught on that rabbit hole. I understand. We just came back from a trip. Spent 14 days in a row because God sent us on a rest, which we needed in Him. But there was also missions missions trip in there. We went all the way up to Pennsylvania, some little podunk town that God told me to go to. Did just long story, but so we do the math. Two two fifty a day was our budget. We were gone fourteen days, you know. It cost money. It took money to get there. Car, I had to have a nice car, a decent car, an ass, hotels. I get it, I understand that, I'm not, you know, not narrow-minded, I'm not, you know, one of those guys that's, you know, but we can't put emphasis on that, God can do things without the money piece, too, you know, I mean, we put emphasis on money, status, power, positions, it's time to cut through all that and be His glory, wherever you're at. So anyhow, that's my message. Where his glory, come on, you know, want to end it with? Let, let's act like it, you know. Me too. How do we treat our neighbors? How do we treat our friends? How do we treat the guy sitting next to us at, at the church? How do we treat the guy at Seven Eleven that hardly makes any money? You know, you know how much they make. Subway, these different places. You know, all these big businesses, some big retails. And they pay these people nothing, peanuts. Expect them to live on that. And we want to go in there and be mad at them when we don't get really good customer service. You know what they're going through? Pray for them. Talk to them. Reach it. Be His glory. In your children's life. In your spouse's life. In your pastor's life. Pray for them. But anyhow, I'm, you know, this is getting too long. I'm just trying to be, keep this short. And I find it hard to do. There's so much I want to say, but we're His glory, guys. Let's do it. In every realm of our lives. So that the world can see it. The neighbors can see it. The spouse can see it. You know? I mean, we can get into how, you know, how little things are big things. You know? We need to be shining in all that we do. And if we have some issues in our lives, we need to address them. So we can be more of His glory. God wants to use any available vessel that's listening. That's the other piece of the same thing. Who's your source? Are you listening? What's God telling you? Go for it. Dig. Don't take my word for it. Don't take somebody else's man's word for it. What's God telling you to do? What's Jesus telling you to do? What's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost telling you to do? What's the Word of God, the map? True direction telling you to do. Lamp on your feet, a light on your path. So dig. Search. Ask. I do that all the time. I'm like, man, God, I don't understand it. You know, I go back to that scripture, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your understanding. I don't get it, I don't understand. 
Show me. I want to see. Maybe I'm from Missouri. Never been. Not, not really, but been there, but. So anyhow, rise and shine, guys. Let's do this. Let's show the world who Christ really is. And why and why God's plan was Jesus Christ. So we love you. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this message, share it with others, comment on it. You can email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. Have a great, wonderful, awesome day. And shine. Like you're supposed to. We're supposed to be His glory. So, anyhow, love you guys.